Welcome to the first episode of my new podcast, Augmenting Your Reality. I'm your host, Avram Raskin, an AI architect from Australia with over a decade of experience in the field. In this podcast, I'll be sharing practical day-to-day examples of augmented reality to help you visualize how this technology will change your life in just a few short years. In this first episode, I'll be talking about my vision and purpose for the podcast, introducing myself and giving a quick explainer on what augmented reality is and how it differs from virtual reality. And if you stick around to the end, I'll give you a sneak preview of the first use case I'll be exploring in the next episode. So grab your headphones and join me on this journey into the world of augmented reality, a technology that's going to change the way that we interact with the world around. First, I want to start off with what's the vision of this podcast. I've been working in this field of augmented reality for over a decade. And constantly, I'm getting asked by people what augmented reality is. So I'll tell them that I work in this field. And usually their questions are something like this. What's augmented reality? Or is that anything like virtual reality? And that kind of sounds like it's a movie or something like a game or something. It doesn't sound like It's got anything got to do with my life. And it's usually the same questions over and over. And the way that I usually answer them is I'll ask them what they do. Like, do they have a hobby or what kind of jobs do they do? And I try either give them an example I've thought of before or on at the moment, I'll try to think of an idea that's going to fit in their life. And I'll try to explain to them how this is going to change their life. Imagine this. Imagine if 60 years ago, you were able to visit your grandparents And you were able to give them simple examples of smartphones. So you know how you use the smartphone today. And you you also know how your grandparents use the smartphone today. So it's very simple for you to go and give them very, very easy examples. You're not going to go and explain the technical background and all the, you know, geeky words behind what technology is, what the internet is. You're going to give them practical use cases of how they are going to use it in the year 2022. So that's exactly what I want to be doing with this podcast. I'm going to be starting in this episode to define it and give you a bit of a background of augmented reality. But the point of the episode, well, the point of the podcast of what we're going to be doing is giving you lots and lots of ideas, almost like giving you a glimpse into the future, right? So how we're going to do is they're going to be short. I'm going to try to stick to about 20, 30 minutes for an episode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with like three ideas. And usually we'll try to stick to it, but as I'm going to try and make these episodes a little bit more off the cuff, I'm going to try and not script them as much, just to give me the leg room, to give me some place to kind of ideate and come up with new ideas as I, you know, go through the episode. We may go more than three ideas, and therefore it may, we, the episodes may go a little bit longer than 20, 30 minutes, but mostly I'm going to try keep it around that length. Please comment and ask any questions that you have along the way. Even though I've worked in this field for a long time and I know my way around it, I'm still also learning constantly. New companies are coming out, new ideas are being generated. So ask me, put some questions down in the comment and I'm going to do my best to get through to all of them. And if they're really, really great questions, we may even make a whole episode for them. The goal for this podcast is to generate and share with you hundreds of practical day-to-day use cases. I want to help you visualize how augmented reality is going to help you out day-to-day. Who am I? Who is Avram Raskin? And why should you be interested in listening to the podcast? Where are the ideas coming from? So to give you a little bit of background into me, I am fascinated about the future. Growing up, I used to really be into sci-fi, mainly books. I used to devour sci-fi books. And for some reason, whenever I came to this concept of augmented reality, of the way that they were interacting with computers of the future, it just made sense to me. It, It almost looked like that when I read it, I was like, okay, this is definitely how we're going to be interacting with computers. And 10 years later, and I'm still working in the field, and I still really believe in it. So... A little over 10 years ago, I actually received a call to come check out a young startup in Silicon Valley. And so I flew down, went to meet them. Turns out we had quite a similar vision. So I joined them a couple months later and I moved to California. 
In the beginning, it was a very small team. This was right in the early days. I was actually the first designer on the team. They were full of engineers. And so it was my responsibility to build that design team and to kind of envision and bring to life an entirely new interface to this paradigm. Essentially, when you change paradigms, when you shift the way that you interact with a computer, the way that that world looks completely changes. So if you think about like a laptop or a desktop, you're mainly interacting with them with your keyboard and mouse, right? And so therefore there's the position of the screen, the way you're sitting down, all of that comes into play of how that operating system looks, how big the buttons are, how big the text is, and how you interact with it. Then the mobile phone, you interact with it a little bit closer. You're using your fingers, you're touching the glass straight on. It's right, it's obviously within hands, you know, arm reach. It's, you know, at the end of your fingertips. So the way that you interact, that interface, the way that it shows itself to you also changes. So when we go into augmented reality, it's going to be another jump. It's going to be another paradigm shift into that interface of the computer, of how we interact with that computer and how we visualize it and see that computer. So over the years, I've lived in many countries around the world, helping dozens of companies create natural and seamless augmented reality products. So I'm not looking to just throw around some holographic screens and call it a day. I'm not looking to holographize, if that's even a word, the 2D paradigm that we're into today and saying, okay, cool, we live in a world where maybe we'll have one or two screens, you know, in front of us, phones another screen, watches another screen. So with augmented reality, I can just chuck, you know, 20 screens and let's call it a day. I don't believe in that way. I don't believe in that vision of augmented reality. I believe in a more natural and seamless way. And that's what I do. I help companies ideate that and also to help build that. I really do believe that AR has the potential to completely change the way that we interact with the world. And also it will completely change the way that we interact with each other. And I'm really excited to share this technology and share this vision with you guys through this podcast. At this point, you're probably asking, what is augmented reality? Give us a little bit of a definition. Try explain to us what augmented reality is simply. And I just want to let you guys know that I'm not going to have a super deep dive into this. I'm going to give you the very, very basics of what augmented reality is just to get you started. And what I think is through the ideas and through the examples in the episodes of this podcast, you're really going to have a very, very deep understanding of it. When people come to me and they ask me, what is augmented reality? What I usually do is I'll define virtual reality first, because most people have usually heard of that. And then I'll differentiate that from augmented reality. The way that I would define virtual reality is you leave this world, you're leaving this reality, and you're immersing yourself into a virtual world, into another reality. Whereas augmented reality is your you're still staying within this world, in this reality, but you're bringing that virtual world into this reality. You're augmenting it on top of this reality. Or another way of looking at it, you're layering it on top of this reality. Now, there's a couple of different visuals that I use for myself. One of them is like the old school projector, kind of what I think about the projectors we had in school um, before, not just like shining light onto the wall, but you would put like these transparent, like plastic papers kind of thing onto this light source and you could kind of put in a few on top of each other and layer up into an image or whatever you want to show yourself or create a slide you know build up to it but it would project through that and then you know push it onto this onto the wall that's the kind of the way that i see this world it's going to be a bunch of layers on top of each other that's going to build up this augmented reality world it's not not just one thing simply Augmented reality is that augmentation of that layer and what is in that layer can really be anything. It doesn't have to be just text. It's not just holographic screens. It's not just 3D models. It's using the world as that base layer to then create and put digital information and digital content on top of it. And it's going to be, you're, you're going to really understand what that is as I start sharing more ideas. And as we go through the episodes, it's going to become more and more easier to understand. You can look up definitions of augmented reality on the web. 
But I've actually been playing with this tool called ChatGPT. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's a generative AI. It's a language model that's been trained by this company called OpenAI. It was released a couple months ago. You can think of it in like as a computer program that's designed to answer questions and provide information to the best of its ability. It can very convincingly put together responses. It's really, really a blast. And if you guys want to know more about it, put your questions or what you want to know in the comments and we can come to it later on. But suffice to say is it's a really powerful program that will answer your question. So I actually fed this question to it and I asked ChatGPT, how would you define augmented reality? And this is what it gave as its definition. Augmented reality, AR, is a technology that allows you to see digital information and virtual objects in the real world. It is created by overlaying digital content onto the real world through a device like a smartphone or AR glasses. AR can be used for a variety of purposes, including entertainment, education, and communication. It has the potential to change the way that we interact with the world around us. For example, you can use AR to view virtual furniture in your living room before making a purchase, or to play a game that takes place in the real world, or to see visual annotations on top of a physical object to learn more about it. AR can also be used in more practical applications, such as providing navigation instructions or displaying information about a location. I also asked it to differentiate itself from VR, and this is what it provided me. AR has been around in some form since the 1950s, but it has only recently become more widely available and accessible due to advancements in technology and the widespread adoption of smartphones. AR has been embraced by many industries, including gaming, advertising, and healthcare. One of the key differences between AR and its cousin, VR, virtual reality, is that AR enhances the real world, while VR creates a completely immersive, simulated environment. VR requires the use of a headset or other specialized equipment to fully transport the user into the virtual world, while AR can be experienced through a smartphone or other device with a camera and screen. As AR continues to evolve and become more prevalent in our daily lives, it has the potential to revolutionize the way we communicate, learn, and interact with the world around us. Quite an interesting and well thought out definition. I'm not going to go line by line, but I just want to pick up a couple things. So we've gone a little bit, I've given you my definition, but I, I just want to pick apart its definition a little bit and also see where it got it right and got it wrong. So it gave us the basics of what it is. It's overlaying digital information and virtual objects on top of the real world. It says it's using it through a device like a smartphone or AR glasses. So that's interesting. A smartphone is most likely going to be the first place that people get introduced to this concept of augmented reality. And that's simply because we've all got that in our pocket. So you may have tried it out through apps like Ikea. I think it's Ikea Smart Place. I would definitely suggest you to try that out. And actually that's the first example that ChatGPT gives us where you're viewing virtual furniture in your living room. Also, uh, what was it called? Pokemon Go was one of the first concepts of augmented reality. And a lot of people still remember that. But remember, that's a, that's a very basic um, experience of augmented reality. Uh, what are some other ones? There's Snapchat uses it. If you've ever used um, face filters in Snapchat or Instagram or things like that, that's a, that's a type of augmented reality. So you would touch, you would start with them on your smartphone not just the smartphone. So it can be an iPhone or an iPad. If you've got yourself an iPhone Pro or an iPad Pro with a LiDAR inside of it, those are actually help you get like better measurements, things like that. They don't, you don't need to use them, but they're definitely a good place to start. Um, if you look on this phone and the, if you look at the camera set up in the back of your phone, it's at the bottom right hand corner. It's a small little black circle. The other one is AR glasses. So most people are going to be familiar with like AR goggles. And we're going to get into these uh, different types of devices in a second. But AR glasses, I would kind of have AR goggles and glasses in a similar thing. Just glasses would be a little bit more slimmed down, a little bit more stylish, a little bit more, uh, you know, fashionable. So it gives us quite a few purposes, variety of purposes. It talks about entertainment, education, communication. 
So those are definitely quite, you know, great use cases. And that's exactly what we're going to get into. We might even have episodes dedicated specifically one for education and one for communication. It's also given us some examples, which are pretty cool. So viewing virtual furniture in your living room. We're actually going to touch upon that when we get to the living room in the home. And there's lots more than just seeing virtual furniture before you make a purchase. And quite a few more examples that you can go with that. So those, were, those will be interesting to look at. It also talks about visual annotations on top of physical objects to learn more about them. So that's also going to be super powerful. Just you can think of a very basic concept of if you're looking at a flower, imagine if right next to the flower, it could maybe outline it, give you the name of the type of flower, tell you a little bit more about it. Think of like if you go to a museum and you have like a little plaque next to it, or if you had like a Google, Wiki, like a, a pop-up, like a Wikipedia little ex, um, summary next to it, that could also be this idea. But with augmented reality, because we understand the context and we understand what the flower is, we can bring that information out there. It's contextual. It's right next to the flower. I have a concept that I call follow the yellow brick road. And uh, that's the idea of the GPS or the navigation using augmented reality. And we're going to get that to that when I... When we talk about the episode about the car, we're going we're gonna to jump into a Tesla and we're going to look into that. So in its definition, as ChatGPT continues, it's talking about that it's been in some form since the 1950s. So it's not new. It's not something that's just hit the world in the last you know, 10, 15 years. It's been around in some form, whether it's been in books or movies or you know, universities it's kind of been around for quite a few decades, you know, but with smartphones and, you know, processing power getting smaller and more portable, it's really starting to come to the forefront. And again, it's giving more examples like gaming, advertising, healthcare. These are all big, you know, areas that we're going to touch upon. I think ad advertising is very, very interesting to me um, because it's kind of challenging in how you bring it to the world. And healthcare is a massive one. So we're going to hit upon, we're going to go to the doctor's office, we're going to go into a hospital room, and we're also going to look at healthcare inside of your living room because that's going to be a big part of the future. Preventative medicine and proactive healthcare are definitely going to be big trends of the future that I really believe in. And AI is going to play quite a big part to them. Then it explains the differences between them where it talks about that VR is a completely immersive simulated environment. AR enhances the world. The last little bit, it talks about that VR requires a headset or specialized equipment to fully transport the user into the virtual world, while AR can be experienced through a smartphone or other device and I, with a, or other device with a camera and a screen. So I just want to make a quick uh, point over here that both of them, if you want to have the proper uh, experience and how we're going to experience those two realities, you are going to be using some sort of headset, whether it's glasses or even contact lenses, you are going to be using specialized equipment. Now, both of them can have that mobile component. So that's where you would kind of start with. So AR can have that smartphone, but so can VR. You can use VR with a mobile device. And really any device that have a camera and a screen, both of them, you can start experiencing. But once you get to the high level stuff, you, you're going to start looking at specialized equipment and headsets and glasses and contact lenses. So different examples or different types of augmented reality is you have marker-based augmented reality, you can have location-based augmented reality or projection-based augmented reality. These are just some examples. So what's a marker-based augmented reality? That's when you would have like a QR code to help you find surfaces or objects. Let's say you wanna put augmented reality around a bottle. So you could put a QR code on the bottle that would help you over there. Nowadays, our systems are becoming a little bit more powerful and a little bit more smart. They're getting computer vision. And so they're able to get a little bit more understanding of the actual world. So they realize, you know, what surfaces are or what tables or specifically the item that you're looking for. And so we don't need to rely on markers as much as we did in the past. You also have location-based augmented reality where you stick items specifically at a location. So maybe you would want to put it at a pub, or you'd want to put it by a specific bridge or in the town square. So you would tie it into an actual place, usually with some sort of GPS coordinate. 
Then you also have projection-based AR, which is kind of augmented reality, but without the need for a personal specialized device. So those could be used in places where you would have like a room and a shared, you, where you would want a shared augmented reality experience. Uh, so one place that could be a good example is maybe like the car. So we'll get into some ideas of the car, but not everything on the car that you specifically want to see it. So I could, if I could project in different areas of the doors or the windshield or, or the back of the seats, then I could use the car's interior as augmented reality without requiring the use of glasses. So you could use that. Actually, if you've ever taken a look, if you've ever, ever been to a light show, sometimes cities have festivals and they have these light festivals and they had projection mapping on buildings. Those are really cool experiences. And I actually call projection mapping like the grandfather of augmented reality. Because when you see these things, you kind of get an idea of what augmented reality could become. Looking at type of t hardware, what are the kind of hardware that we would use? So today, like we said, we would start off with like mobile AR. Those are usually apps that are going to be loaded onto your phone or an iPad. And again, you can think of things like Pokemon Go and Snapchat and Ikea, furniture, uh, Instagram, things like that. After that, you once you start looking at specialized hardware and not the smartphone, the generic smartphone that we all have, you're looking at things more, today you're looking at more like goggles. So they're usually bigger and bulkier. And you're looking at things like Microsoft HoloLens, Magic Leap, Enreal. It's quite a lot of companies over there. And it's definitely a lot more specialized, but they're still a bit bulky. You're not gonna wanna walk around in public day to day with them. They're more for developers or enterprise. In the future, we're going to want to develop more regular glasses. And that's where I think it's going to start breaking into, you know, mainstream. So rumors are that Apple's working on a reality pro or whatever they're going to call their headset and operating system. But we're hoping that those are probably going to look a little bit more like regular glasses or something more fashionable that you would be happy to be seen walking out on, you know, day to day on the street. And those are going to be lighter and still powerful. What I think Apple might be using is I think they're going to lean heavily on the iPhone. They're going to use the computation power that you have in an iPhone. They may even start bringing in the M1 chips or the whatever it's going to be M3 or M4 by then. But I think they're going to use a lot of the power inside of your phone. So you're going to have that in your pocket still. And it's just going to connect with glasses. Now, the glasses are going to have its own cameras and sensors and its own processing power probably on board. But I think it's going to still have a secondary device that it's going to, it's going to work with. And hopefully that's going to be a wireless connection with very low latency and things like that. And hopefully that's going to help it keep a slim package, a stylish package, and something that you, know, you and I might be more than happy to walk down the street with. And then moving a little bit beyond that, we're looking at things like contact lenses. So you already have a company like Mojo Vision that's already working on those kind of things. And later on, after contact lenses, you're looking at implants, but that's a little bit for the future. So a lot of the ideas that I'm going to be sharing with you, I'm kind of looking into that kind of futuristic area where think about wearing a pair of regular glasses, just like you would wear a pair of sunnies or, re or your, your regular glasses of today, something that's not heavy, something you can walk around all day with, or even contact lens. Those are kind of the devices that I'm going to be picturing as I'm going to help you visualize these augmented reality ideas. And just to round it off, those various industries that we've been looking at, and we're going to take a look at uh, in future episodes, are things like improving navigation, enhanced education, retail, shopping, communication, there's going to be social, there's going to be a lot of work, like interacting with teams, architecture, so many, so many industries. And we're going to touch upon each one and give you a lot of examples. So when you listen to, you can even listen to one, one episode in this podcast, and you'll come away with quite a few ideas. And if you stick with me, when you have conversations with people in the future, you're not only going to be able to define augmented reality, but you'll be able to explain to people how augmented reality is actually going to change your life and their life in the future. So we gave you a little bit of background onto what this podcast is and who it's for. I'm not gearing this podcast towards just techno people or people that are, you know, just interested in augmented reality. I'm really gearing this to people that 
probably have never heard of augmented reality before, and this might be their first time, or you've heard it before, or you've seen it in a movie, or you've played with a small little game once, and you thought, okay, it's something that might be fun for a movie, you know, I'm no Iron Man, I'm no billionaire, I'm not going to use something like a huge system like Jarvis, and... I've seen probably small games like Pokemon Go or Ikea. And okay, I've seen one or two things, but I still don't get how this is going to be changing my life or I still don't get how augmented reality is going to be the future computer. And that's exactly what this podcast is for. And if you're interested in knowing how augmented reality is going to be your future computer and how augmented reality is going to change your life, you're going to love this podcast. So just to give you a quick sneak peek into the first idea and how we're going to kind of structure the episodes is I'm going to start with the home. That's something that we're all familiar with. We spend a lot of time at the home and we're going to start with one room, the living room, and then we're going to make our way through all the rooms of the house. And in each room, we're going to explore a couple ideas over there just to get you started. And then from the home, we'll step outside, we'll maybe take a walk and see how augmented reality will be looking, how it looks around the neighborhood. Maybe we'll jump in the car and see what it looks like in the car, driving to work, you know, in the gym, traveling, hiking up a mountain. We're going to go through all these scenarios. If you happen to be in any of those scenarios for those episodes, I highly encourage you to like sit down, relax and try experience it. So that first idea is going to be controlling the lights. So when you join us on the next episode, right, find a couch or a beanbag in the living room and start off looking at the lights. And we're going to look at different ways of controlling those lights. And maybe we'll do a little bit more than just turning on and off those lights. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Augmenting Your Reality. And remember, AR is not just changing the world. It's going to change your life. Join me next time as we explore some more practical use cases of this revolutionary technology. And please, if you liked this episode, share it with your friends and family. And don't forget to leave a comment and any questions you have down below. Remember, this is a new podcast. This is the first episode in a brand new podcast. So let's get some momentum. Share with your friends and families if you loved it. And I'll catch you guys in the future.